I've got just a couple more things to do here on the airplane and then I'll be done with it. It'll be ready to mount on the floats. One of the things I have to do yet is to fit up those float plane blocks. I'm going to have to do like I did with the wing strut forks. So I'll probably have to get some sandpaper and sand that paint down and stuff there until I can fit those blocks in there. And then I'll have to do the same thing up front here where the forward landing gear attach fitting is. I'll have to clean that up so that I can get those blocks attached there. I can't do anything with those until I get this thing hoisted up and off of the stands. I don't have the doors mounted up yet. I was waiting on those until we get everything else done, just like the fairings and stuff that in the handhold covers, inspection covers and stuff. Those need to stay off until the airplane gets inspected. The doors, I did fit those up so they're ready to go on, but the last thing I have to do with the door is that cut out the plexiglass, the plastic window for the upper door half. I rough cut that out when I was dealing with all the rest of the windows, but I've got to finish cut it and fit it in there. And then there's a little fairing that I have to make that goes on the front of the door uh, half that holds that window in. That window slides in a channel, and then there's a little, just a 90 degree fairing that fits over that to hold it, the window in. So I have to make that yet. This is the weld on float fitting for the rear strut attachment on the floats. The regular Edo float attachment has a clamp that fits in here, there's a plate that fits on here, and there's a couple U-bolts that go around underneath this one, post that comes down in this lower longer on, and then down underneath, and it clamps on there, and it's got a piece that comes down for the tie wire to hook onto. F. Atley Dodge had came out with this modification that you can get for a Cub, that you can weld on these float fittings, they're steel, and they weld on to this uh, lower longer on into these tubes here and then airframes alaska incorporates that onto the fuselages when you build them it's an option that you can get that they they weld them right on there and they can go in underneath the fabric so i had that put on this airframe when i had it built you know it's in there i'll powder coat it in and everything and then there's this little tab that fits up in there a bolt goes through here and this little piece right here fits up in there and then that's what the strut comes up into and attaches to is this little bar here well, with the trouble that i had getting the wing strut forks to fit on the pad there i had to sand all the paint down and stuff on those to get them to fit on there thought i was going to have to do the same thing with these float attach fittings but once i checked it they slid right in there so these pieces here are steel and they were I think CAD plated. Well, I went ahead and took those over to the shop and powder coated them. I uh, coated them with some corrosion resistant primer first and then this, this light gray. They're ready to go on there. I've got the bolts on there now but I need to get a bunch of peralcotone and paint those all up with peralcotone and everything. <laughs> get them finished up to get them put on but they're ready to go on. Now at the same time or similar time I worked on a couple of other things. I got the window finished. And then there's a piece that uh, has got to be made to fit over that, a little fairing that fits over that that holds that window in and closes it in from the, in the front. Well, I made that up. I had just uh, found a piece of scrap aluminum. That was good aluminum. It wasn't out of the scrap pile, but it was out of my saved pile. Some cutoffs from the stuff that I made before. Anyway, I made up this uh, little fairing. I powder coated it black. So that's all done. That uh, upper door half is done, ready to hang. And I'd found these center sections, uh, these center lower fairings that go on the bottom of the wing. I kind of misplaced those when I did the other ones, but I cleaned those up and then painted them the finished color. So they're all done too. So now the next thing to do is to hoist this airplane up. I've got to weigh it and, and then I can start fitting on the floats. So I went into town today and at the fish processing plant I was able to get a piece of two inch channel iron here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and make a spreader bar to hoist that airplane with. I've got the two points on the airplane on the wings, uh, one on each wing to hook a hoist to, but you don't want to just hook something directly to that because it pulls in and it can distort everything. So I make this bar and I'll have a piece going down off of it that'll go to the wing and then the cable coming off of it and that'll hold the cable from pulling in, pinching everything together and pulling it together. 
I had a pretty nice one that I had made up for my 170 when I had it that I would carry with me when we go north so we could lift the airplane up. We'd pick the airplane up and stick it on the boats when we were fish spotting, get it up on the boat at night. But I don't know where that went to. It uh, disappeared someplace. And it didn't matter because it wouldn't have worked anyway because this fuselage in the Cub was a lot narrower than the, than the 170 was. And even this wider fuselage is narrower than 170. Well, anyway, I cobbled this together a few years ago, several years ago, for picking up the Cub. And it's just a 2x4. I've got some cable on it, uh, some notches in the end of it here, and just held the, the cable in with a couple of nails of, of uh, fence staples, actually. And I've got a couple of these screw-on quick links here to hook onto the fuselage there on the lifting eyes. And then an eye here, a ring here on the front to hook onto the hoist, whatever hoist we happen to f have to pick the airplane up. But this one won't work for this fuselage because it's uh, made for the standard cub fuselage. And it's this one is a little bit wider. This one will be a little bit nicer. So i got to get busy and make the spreader bar. I got a new spreader bar made up for lifting the airplane, hoisting the airplane up with. I've got it set up on there now. It's hooked into the eyes on the wing roots on the main spar. And I've got it hooked up to my overhead chain fall, chain hoist. I went to a fish processing company and I hesitated to go there because they don't know me from Adam. But I talked to the guy there and he gave me a piece of this two inch channel. This is a real nice it's fairly heavy. It's two inches by one and a quarter. The flanges are one and a quarter and the body is two inches. Oh, a guy gave me that. So I took him a couple of jars of homemade jam, one jar of homemade raspberry jam and a jar of spruce tip jelly. So he was pretty happy with that. My first idea was to put a couple of eye bolts in there. So I bought a couple of 5 16 forged eye bolts. I bought four of them and I put two down, hanging down and two up. I was going to attach the cable to the on the upside and uh, clevis is there for the hanging the airplane from on the bottom side. Those are heavily galvanized and the quality of them wasn't very good. I stripped one of them out just putting the nut on it, putting it together. As I got to looking at it I just decided that it was 5 16 I just wasn't very happy with it. I went down and got a couple of forged eye bolts, 3 8 I made a couple of wire poles. They're just a piece of that same strapping that I got off of the old bleachers for the school that I've made a few other things with. They're pretty pitted and rusty, but they're still plenty heavy duty enough for that. I cut them 4 inches long and drilled them out 3 8 Then I put them on the 20 ton hydraulic press and, and put a bend in them there. They actually worked out pretty good. I run the bolts all the way through so that way it's not pulling any on the channel iron or the channel aluminum itself that's pulling right on the bolts. And then I got 3 16 cable and made up the cables for it. I already had the eye, the ring there on the top. Anyway, that looks like it's going to work pretty good. That actually looks a lot more presentable than that old 2x4 did. So I need to lift this up and it's going to move forward when I do cat wanted to be held and then there's a little bird that was in here in the hangar and so he wanted to get down and chase that bird. Now the bird flew up on the shelf where he can't get to it so he wants to get held again. So I can hook my scale up to this one but I was talking to a friend of mine who's got a little fish processing company and he's got a certified scale so I think I'll borrow that. I need to get a picking point fixed up back there in the back. Hey cat, what are you doing? There you go. I got you. I got you. Well, anyway, I get a picking point back there where I can pick the back end of the airplane up and, and put a scale on it too so we can do a weight and balance on it. And then I can pick it up and uh, take the little bogey gear or the little gear underneath it out and uh, start fitting up the floats.